Alright guys, in this lecture we're going to be talking about viruses and bacteria. So what is a virus and what is bacteria? Well bacteria are small unicellular organisms that can cause disease. Viruses are small non-living particles that affect host cells and living organisms. So today's topic is about the bubonic plague and smallpox. The bubonic plague is a disease caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. This disease causes fevers, vomiting, and buboes. Buboes are huge blister-like knots which are caused by the swelling of the lymph nodes. Smallpox was a viral disease that was caused by the variola virus. Smallpox causes fever, spots on the body, and permanent scarring. So we're going to be talking about the bubonic plague and its cause and symptoms. Well, it's caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, and it's almost always in a rod shape, but sometimes it can be in a spiral shape. It causes fevers, vomiting, seizures, buboes, and many other symptoms. So how does this infect the body? Well, it's caused by a bite from an infected rat flea. It infects the lymphatic system, therefore infecting lymphatic cells. It spreads by inhalation from coughs, vomit, etc. It can live in the air for up to an hour, though it dies by sunlight and drying out. The immune system is unable to fight off this bacteria in a productive manner. So a bit about the historical background about this disease. There was a huge epidemic in Europe from 1346 to 1353, killing up to 20 million people. This outbreak was called the Black Death. Treatments were conducted by plague doctors who wore these beak masks with flowers at the end of the beak. It supposedly prevented them from getting the disease, though this proved pretty ineffective. Many other smaller outbreaks have occurred since. So about the discovery and treatment of this disease. Yersinia pestis was discovered in Hong Kong in 1894 by a Swiss physician, Alexandre Yersin. Alexandre also helped develop treatment for the bubonic plague. Current treatment includes antibiotics, which can help eliminate this disease from the body. So we're going to move on to smallpox now and its cause and symptoms. It's caused by one of the two viruses, variola major or variola minor. Variola major is much more common and severe than variola minor. We will be talking about variola major in today's lecture. This causes fevers, muscle aches, flu-like symptoms, and most notably spots all over people's skin. So how does this infect the body? Well, it's caused by the variola virus and it first infects the respiratory system. Then it migrates to the lymph nodes which infects the lymphatic system and lymphatic cells. Then multiplies in the bloodstream and affects other parts of the body like bone marrow. It infects by inhalation from coughs, vomit, etc. It can live outside the host for multiple years if it's under very favorable conditions. The variola virus confiscates the entire immune system. The immune system is unable to fight back. So a bit about the historical background. So smallpox was a huge epidemic in the 18th century in Europe. It's estimated that 300 to 500 million deaths occurred because of this disease. Evidence of smallpox exists all the way back to ancient Egyptian times. And it's used by the Europeans and Americas as a way of killing the Native American populations back when they were colonizing the Americas. This is the first instance of biological terrorism. So about the discovery and treatment of this disease. So sadly, there is no cure for smallpox, though there is a vaccine that was created by Edward Jenner. It was actually the first vaccine ever created. He made the first one. He was the first one to fully study smallpox. He used cowpox to be able to make people much less susceptible to smallpox. Modern smallpox vaccines are used today, and smallpox was announced eradicated by the World Health Organization in 1980 was the last known incident of smallpox being recorded in 1977.